presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Al in Tampa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Oh, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, if your listeners don't get the gold report, they're, uh, they're missing out. I mean, you're... With your gold report, you just printing money. I love it. Uh, you're my best ad out there, Al. Let's go to uh, Jeff in New Jersey. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? Great. Uh, hey, listen, I was calling to thank you. Uh, a few weeks ago, you were prompting on your show to fill out that uh, $10,000 uh, grant. Yes. So I filled it out, and um, just a couple days ago, I found $1,000 in my business checking account. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I owe it to you, because it, uh, if it wasn't for your prompting, I, I would have just assumed, you know, no way I would have gotten anything. So I, I wanted to thank you. No, we appreciate the growl and a problem with us yet. No. Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Always do your best, but don't overdo. This is a cool card, man. When you overdo, you deplete your body to go against yourself, and it will take you longer to accomplish your goals. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials trading up 416. Nasdaq's up 315. S&Ps are up by 73. Gold, gold contract down $7.20, trading at 1805 an ounce. You got silver up four cents, twenty dollars fifty-three cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up a buck, ninety-one dollars sixty-five cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. Ten-year note up eight ticks, trading one nineteen twenty-three. The thirty-year down fourteen at one forty-one thirty-one. And King Dollar, King Dollar's getting taken to the woodshed out here. It is down eleven hundred and forty-nine ticks, trading at one hundred five two twenty-four. We have the there we go. Whoop! Don't do it that quick. Where are you? We have the pound trading at 122. The yen is out here at 132, and the euro is at 103. It's off that low, man. The bottom line, very, you know, it was par that was there, 101, the euro. You're going to go to Italy, you're going to go to Europe, folks. Get those euros right now, man, because this dollar wants a lot lower price. Now, let's talk about the CPI, okay? Because the bottom line is that, you know, this, this print came in. Uh, came in a little less than the market was waiting for. And then, uh, you know, bottom line, the market likes it, it goes topside. So, what you, what you had in, inside here, okay, it was, it was just slightly lower too, by the way, okay? You're talking about the consumer price index increased 8.5% from a year earlier, um, you know, coming down from 9.1, okay? So you got a basically, basically, you know, six tenths of 1%, right? Um, you had the, uh, the CPI, uh, you know, bottom line, you know, which strips out the volatile food and energy, uh, I mean, it's the core. The, the core which strips out the uh, food and energy, bottom line rose three-tenths of one percent from June and 5.9 from the year before. Now, when you start going through some of these numbers, folks, okay, what, what's really cool to look at is this. If we come down here, okay, so Full gasoline, of course, we knew gasoline was coming down. That's down 7.7%. That's a monster number on the way down. Okay, that's the most since April of 2020. Um, utility prices down 3.6%. Food up 10.9. That's a big one. There's no doubt about that. As we come down a little bit more, now this is the one I want you to really wrap your head around because, so, shelter. We know that the the shelter cost had gone up dramatically, folks, okay? So shelter cost uh, rose uh, 5 tenths of 1% from June and 5.7 from last year. That's the most since 1991. Um, that being said, what you're going to see next is you're going to see that hotel prices actually fell 3.2%. They fell. My take is that what you're going to actually see here inside of the shelter cost because housing is getting softer, that's going to get softer. So that's going to be the next thing, and that's a very big part of it, that you're going to see flattening out. 
Um, and that's going to make a difference on a longer term basis. Now, I, my take is that it's not going to make a difference in the aspect of, you know, the Fed raising rates. It is, however, you can see it through the market, it is uh, an aspect that the people want to buy the market because they're looking out, and watch this here, let's go, I'm going to put the yield curve up so you can see this baby out. So if you're watching Tiger TV, what you're going to see here, the very top, this is the yield curve. You hear a lot about it, but this is how it works, right? So you get the two-year, three-year, five-year, seven-year, ten-year, thirty-year, right? Well, you can see on the two-year, um, this is a monster number on the two years. It's amazing, actually. The two years, 3.2%. The three year is 3.1%. So it inverts right away, right away. The five year is 2.9%. The seven year is 2.8%. The 10 year is 2.7%. And then 30 is 3. So what that generates, folks, is that you are going to have, bottom line, you know, softer economy. Doesn't mean you, you know, you have to basically go to hell in a handbag. You'll get a softer economy. But the market is betting on that within the next couple years, the bottom line, these rates are going to stabilize. And I suspect what, what's going to end up happening is that w when, when you get a, a rate structure that is going up very quick, most times, folks, okay, it really takes almost a year to about a year and a quarter, a year and a half to really hit. Uh, now, the rate hits immediately. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about, as it makes its way through the economy, as it hits, you find out who has strength and who has weakness inside businesses, inside households, inside all of it. And that's where I think we're at right now. Now, the S&P, bottom line, looks like it's going to be an ABC structure up. This, is, this market's going to blow some minds, man. I mean, there's no doubt that you talk about a fast acceleration off the bottom. Um, it's normal. Yeah, it's a fast acceleration. Uh, if we get, uh, I think it's 68 million shares I'm looking far out here. What's that one? That's 79 million. Yeah, 68. 68 million. And you might not get it. You know, you, you might not get it out here today. We, we need 20 million. You, you, we'll, we'll, see what, we'll see how this shakes out. Now, if you get that, then you have an ABC structure up to 431. And 431 brings you all the way over to, uh, let me see this, 435. Well, it brings you, yeah, somewhere into the swing point there from May 4th. Now, NDX100 is a different animal. Uh, as I, when I brought up when I was doing the update, this is a little dangerous, and, and what's dangerous about it is this, and you know, you've probably heard me say this many times. When you actually have a, a good day, and you're driving into a swing, and you can't take the swing out, it's like, okay, this is kind of, you know, the swing we're talking about here is at uh, 326.47. Now, you're gonna have more volume than that, and that, get, that confounds it even a little bit more. So, this is something to keep your eye on, man. That's, that's the real bottom line. This, this NASDAQ might need a little more rest than the S&P. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow. Dow Industrials right now is trading up by 435. The NASDAQ's up 325. S&P's up 76. We'll come right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? 
Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up 438. Nasdaq's up 328, 329. S&Ps are up 76. Let's go inside the Dow Industrials first and see the strength versus the weakness inside the Dow. Point move, move is out here. Let's take a look at it. We have uh, Goldman putting 69 positive points. Salesforce, 41. Microsoft, 39. Home Depot, 35. Taken away from it. United Health 11. Uh, Merck, 5. Chevron one. And let me just see, is Disney after the close here or was it already out? Oh, cool, man. Okay, so Disney's coming out after the close here. So let's look at Disney right now. So Disney, I think it's already an ABC up. It is, it's an ABC up. So Disney, yeah, we did this yesterday. So let's see, you got 109. Yeah, you get about 10 bucks. So you're talking 115. Right now you're at 112. So it looks like whatever Disney's going to say after the close, this thing wants to go higher. If we take a look at the revenue wise, what they're looking for is 21 billion folks, and they want to bring uh, 95 cents to the bottom line. We go inside the NDX 100. We take a look at the strength versus the weakness inside the NDX. Uh, you have Z scale up uh, 10 10.5%. 10 uh, crowd strikes up 7.3 quarters. You got uh, DocuSign up 7 and Datadog's up 6.9. Taken away from it. JD.com's off 2.2. You have uh, Dollar Tree down 1.6. Vertex Pharmaceuticals off 1. And Pin Duo Duo is off uh, 6 tenths of 1%. What is pretty wild is that, you know, you, you have the... Uh, the Fed fund rate, and then you have, of course, all the Fed governors. Uh, you had, you know, the, the Federal Reserve um, governor out in uh, Minneapolis, uh, Neil Kakash Kashkari. Uh, it's he, uh, you know, he flipped from one side to the other. Now he did this, you know, a good three or four months ago, easy. Uh, but he used to be the uh, biggest dove. Pre-COVID, even going into COVID, he was the biggest dove. Now he's really the largest hawk, okay? He is looking, uh, we'll find out first if he's a voting member, but he's looking that he wants to see the benchmark rate. So let's bring this up. So we bring the Fed rate. We're at 2.5 to 2.7, I think, right now. No, 2.25 to 2.50. It's the middle one right here. That's where upper, they always have an upper and lower band. So he's looking that... Uh, 
by the end of this year. So uh, let's see. It's never going to get there. Yeah. So I don't know. Hey, well, let's see. Let's look at these meetings. So he's looking for 3.9 by the end of this year and 4.4 at the end of 2023. Well, you can see 4.4 between 3.9. So that's no big deal. But from 2.5 to 3.9 is one and a half. Okay. So now let's look at the meetings. So the meetings, they can do that pretty easy, actually, because um, when you're talking meetings, it's, it's September and then November and December. Yeah, there's three meetings left. If they did a half a point each one, yeah, that would get it there. But see, actually, when you do the math on that, too, it's pretty cool. Because they, they can definitely do a half a point each time. But a half a point each time, folks, you know, it's not the end of the world. That's, that's the real bottom line. Particularly if, in fact, the 10-year note, if the public, meaning whether it's the hedge funds and the, and the trust funds and states and governments keep buying the 10-year, and that 10-year wants to keep going higher, uh, that is going to basically keep rates lower. They, those are, that's going to keep rates lower that you and I have to pay. That's, that's the real bottom line. That's how that baby uh, does shake out. Um, if we go take a look at the uh, higher volume equities out here, and it's going to be a close call on volume. It looks like we might get it. Uh, I'll pull up the NYSE in a second. You got advanced micro up by three and a half dollars. You got uh, Nvidia's up ten. You got Apple up three ninety. Amazon is up four seventy. You get uh, Bank of America up a uh, buck twenty five. Um, Tesla. Oh, let's go look at Tesla. So uh, Tesla. The bottom line is that Musk has sold billions of, of stock. There's, he sold 6.9 billion. And uh, the, the bottom line is he's saying he's selling it to avoid a fire sale. The bottom line, folks, is that uh, he is very slick. There's no doubt about it. And what that's also telling me, though, too, and smart move, no doubt, but you, no doubt about it. Let's go over to Twitter, because if we take a look at Twitter, he's saying he's selling them just in case he doesn't have to, have, doesn't have to do a fire sale on Twitter. Um, you know, if the, if, if the case goes against him. Um, what you have here, I suspect, number one, that the case is going to go against him, which is going to be a heads up like beyond belief. <laughs> um, and, you know, we'll see where the rest of it shakes out. You know, Twitter does, doesn't have any volume up here, man. I mean, it, it's going higher, but, you know, there, there's nothing there right now. Uh, right now, you're $10 below. So let's just look at this for a second. Because this, when you when you actually pull this and look at the aspect of the amount of money that Twitter shareholders would make if this comes across, it's pretty extraordinary, man. I mean, you're talking about they have uh, 765 million shares, and the bio price is ten dollars more expensive than we are right now. So. You know, right now the market's still very shaky as to, okay, is this deal going to go through? Um, you know, we'll see whether uh, he does a negotiated settlement. But more than likely, the way that this normally would come down is that you could do a negotiated settlement that would cost him billions, not just the one billion takeoff. Um, both of the law firms are, are huge. There's no doubt about that. The, the law firms, the price that they're paying is going to be in the millions, hundreds, hundreds of millions probably. Um, there was one article when this first was coming out that this case itself, right, so check this out. This case itself will keep both, on both sides, it'll keep the, like, uh, assistant attorneys, uh, whoever, you know, they, it's not, they're not interns, they're real, they're real attorneys, but they just started. It will keep them busy going right up to this October date, 16, 18, 20 hours a day. That's how dramatic it's going to be, and it's only going to be a five-day trial. So um, the, right now, Twitter is saying that they only need three days to basically say what they want to say. And so, you know, and we'll see how it's going to shake out, but I suspect he's going to probably get stuck with it. Let's go take a look at the uh, GDX, okay? And we got divergence out here. And what the divergence is today is that you have the dollar down big, and gold still can't move. You know, GDX needs more volume. Uh, you know, Newmont is the big dog and the drag inside the GDX, inside the HUI, 
inside the XAU. And you can see no, <laughs> Newmont can still kind of, kind of get out of his way. What has happened is that it looks to me like Barrick has come off the low. Bottom line, you get, you get a little juice off Barrick. Barrick's the second largest waiting. You know, we'll see if we can get more juice. Right now, Barrick's trading sideways. You're down um, five cents in Barrick. We'll see where that uh, baby can shake out. The, there's no doubt that when you have this type of divergence, normally what ends up happening, this, this, this gold contract is going to catch up with them big time. Because the break in the dollar is a monster break downtown. That's, that's a reality out here in, in spades. Let's go take a look at the NQs. The NQs are making it back up to the top up here. Let's see what kind of volume that we have on this move. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so last time we were up here, last peak had uh, 10,600 contracts. Last 10 minute bar was 6,700. We are six minutes into this bar and we're at 5,000. It's not going to make it. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now are trading up 467. You get the NASDAQ up 344. S&Ps are up uh, 80. Let's go take a look at the E-mini out here. So uh, we are approaching uh, the highs of the day. It's been consolidating out here. And, you know, it's been pretty cool <laughs> uh, the way this has been shaking out. You had the first acceleration up. Uh, then you've just been consolidating now. So let's look at this for a second. So your first spike, well, the first spike high was the monster, okay? That thing had uh, 83,000 contracts. Then when we spiked higher at uh, 11 o'clock this morning, you had 61,000. Well, you try to get up there and you only get up there with 22,000. So now let's look down the l lower level. First... Not the first one. This is the big one right here, man. Well, it's not that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So on the SPY, 
It's the same benchmark as that NDX. The benchmark there is at 1020 this morning. So the high of that is 4189. Um, you know, and that's that's game. That's game here coming into the close, man. So this is going to be intriguing. Uh, and we're going to be able to tell, like, the last 10 minutes in the S&P was 20,000 contracts. That peak has 22. Let's go into the NQs and take a look at the NQs. So NQs right now. Bring that down. Okay, so 982 is the high. We just hit 981.75. We just hit, uh, yeah, we did. So 982 right there, yeah, 982.75. So the 982.75 has 10,600. We just did 8,100. So it doesn't have the juice right now to break it. This is going to get interesting, man, watching all this all shake out. So then we'll go, I've got to go back to that same 1020 bar. Is that it? Yeah, the 1020 bar there. The top of that is uh, 290. Now, that would be quite a way down from here, but that's bottom. That's game. That's, that's game right there. We put this across. Whoops, not that one. Right there. Whoops, stay in there. Yeah, that's game down there, man. So we'll see how this baby is going to shake out. Silver, let's go take a look at the silver market out here. Let's see, where are you? Okay, so silver, 59,000 contracts. Yeah, so this is, yeah, silver's acting better than gold right now, you know. The bottom line is that, uh, yeah, silver's an ABC up too. On Monday, bottom line, you broke the B point. We, did, we had uh, 68,000 contracts. You're going into 58. So you got an ABC structure up there inside of the silver market. If we go take a look at a few of the silver stocks, let's take a look at Pan American Silver first. Um, hasn't held price. You're up a little. EXK. I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's always wild, folks, when EXK is actually down four cents. So let's go to Hecla. When the dollar gets smoked like this and gold isn't up, <laughs> it's always like, okay, man. You know, I, normally what you'd hear me actually say is that, okay, what's going to be wrong? Meaning, is the dollar not wrong, but what's going to spin around? Is, is it going to be the dollar that spins around? Uh, meaning flip right around and go higher, or is it going to be gold that flips higher? Well, my take is that it's going to be gold. And the reason being is that you can see how the first break that we had on the dollar, okay, um, you know, bottom line got us underneath this benchmark. That benchmark, the benchmark we're talking about now, is the 106.792. So it oscillated around that benchmark, okay, and then just bottom line couldn't handle it and then what we did is that this morning is that you broke and you broke with conviction a break with conviction you know in the equity market or in the futures market we have volume too my definition would be wide price spread accelerated volume and the currency market you don't have volume so bottom line is just a wide break with uh, wide price break. If we go to the euro, we take a look at the euro, just the opposite side. We take a look at the euro here. You're going to see the euro, bottom line, took out its consolidation too. Consolid it went to 102. Now, the low of the euro was 99.52. Um, bottom line, <laughs> if you're going overseas, if you're going to Europe, folks, this is go get those euros. Uh, because if this break, so picture, this is saying, we'll just do this the opposite way. Watch this. This is cool. So we go like this, go like this, you're going to see the euro saying now it can go to 111. Now 111, that's 10%, man. That's 10% when you talk on currencies, you know. And what's so cool about that trade there is that if you actually are going to Europe, the bottom line is that let's say you're spending five grand, two grand, ten grand, whatever that that is, you change it. Well, you know you're going to spend that anyway, right? So now you get euros. That's the first part. If you go on vacation, awesome. If you don't, you don't go on vacation, you know, if the dollar goes where I think it's going to go, you 
you just get more money at period. That's what it comes down to. And that's how it, it does work when you are looking at all different types of currencies. You know, if we go over to the, let's go to the Canadian dollar right now. So we take a look at the Canadian dollar. Canadian dollar is trading 127. And you're gonna see, this is a lot of movement too, no doubt, there you go. So that's getting stronger, okay? Uh, bottom line, this thing peaked out, it looks like 132. Um, and you know, this hasn't broken, um, you know, this is still in a consolidation. But you know, that being said, it looks like the, the Canadian dollar wants to go to one, one, 125. Yeah, 125, you know? So let's go to the yen. Let me see what this yen is doing. Okay, so the yen's at 132.98. That's a nice break too. See, yeah, this is this is gonna get wild, man. And what I mean by this is gonna get wild inside of the gold market because there's no doubt that if you're a fundamentalist, right, <laughs> you'd be going out of your mind right now into the aspect of you know why is gold down when the dollar is down 1,100 ticks? Okay. Uh, that that's saying that uh, guess what bottom line um, you know something's wrong let's go over to the oil market so this this market's gonna get really intriguing and this is why first let's take a look at where we are so okay so we're at 91.56 see the 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 driving meaning not driving driving in our car okay but Price-wise, when the dollar gets weaker, these commodities get stronger. So this very well may hold in number one. There's a lot of volume. Three thirty. Well, we hit a low with uh, three hundred fifty thousand. You had three thirty-five right now. If this dollar, you know, stays down tomorrow, which I guess it will. Well, I think it will. Okay, I guess. <laughs> um, the bottom line is that you can get some juice inside the oil market again. That's where this whole wild card is going to come in because most times what you see is this. So picture, gold is held up unbelievably with the dollar being so high. Oil, bottom line, you know, back down in a monster way and oil's backing down because, you know, bottom line is that not as much demand. That being said, as that dollar keeps getting lower, guess what? It can put more impetus for higher price inside of the commodity market. You know, that's, just, that's just how it goes, man. The bottom line, you know, because the, the euro is going to be worth more money, the yen is going to be worth more money, I mean, he gets the U.S. dollar, and all oil, not all oil, almost 98% of the oil is priced in dollars. Dow Industrials right now up 495, Nasdaq's up 349, S&P's up 83. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, 
trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial's up by 514. Nasdaq's up by 352. You got the S&P's up 85. Let's go into the composite and take a look. Well, I don't want to do it first. We're going to go to the volumes first. Okay, so inside the NYSE, we're dealing with uh, 538. That means that we're still only going to do like 850, man. It's not, that's for a big day like today, that's not monster volume. Uh, if we go into the composite, we take a look at the composite, you're at 4.2, it's going to be shot. That's going to be shot volume in the composite. The composite's weak. Uh, I know we're going right for the highs right now, but uh, bottom line is that um, this, let me see, okay, so the, com the high of Monday was uh, 855. Look at this. We're gonna, well, we're at it right now. 850.98. It's trying to take it out. And then if we went, let me do this again. So the volume on Monday we're looking for. And on Monday we did 5.1 billion. We're not going to do it, man. We're not gonna, so we'll see whether the composite can get the price. We're not going to get the volume. If we go to the queues, we take a look at the queues. We're talking about the aspect on the queues that... You know, it couldn't handle this uh, swing point, meaning the swing point that we're talking about here is that 3.2647. We hit 3.2592. Um, you have 43 million shares traded. That's light volume, man. That's the bottom line. You know, uh, we had, we, last week we pushed on 53 million, then you failed at 44. We went south yesterday with 2039, and that was that was a lesson. I mean, that's a lesson. You know, yesterday we were talking about you were down with 39, you're coming into 53. It's like, okay, man, this thing wants to pop. Okay, uh, you get that, and hey, we'll see where this is going to shake out, man. Meaning, is it going to close at the high of the day, and is it, is it going to get this 326.47? The 326.47 is crucial. So pitch out this. And this, I know this is like, uh, it's so subtle. Um, and, you know, bottom line, um, yeah, meaning that as you're coming into, I think it just took it out, actually. Let's go look at this again. Okay. Because what ends up happening is that we just got a surge. It just broke the highs. And... We're at 03, so 47. It's at uh, it's 326. It needs 46 cents. Yeah. So we'll see whether we get that uh, 46 cents. That's what it comes down to. The uh, After the close out here, you are going to have Disney coming out. Um, you know, bottom line is that we had a bunch of them come out last night. And um, was it Rube? Let me put this into... The higher volume equities here. We had, yeah, here it is. Uh, Roller blocks come out. That was up 62 cents. No big deal there. Um, Palantir come out. That is trading up 35 cents. This here, 
This is so intriguing because, you know, you talk about uh, now going forward. This is what's so crazy about this equity, folks. OK, let me put this. This still has a 92 P.E. going forward, man. I mean, that's about as intense as you can get, particularly because, you know, this reached a high. It was a spike high of 45. It traded quite a bit of 29 to 20 yeah, to 29. It has a high volume low of 643. The high, the low, the the high of that low is 825. That might have tested 833. Yeah, it did. Yeah, we want to see something cool. This is pretty cool. So, yeah, I talk a lot about the you can test the highs of the lows. So you had volume there of uh, 482 million. Look at this. If we go back to that uh, 17th of uh, June, 17th of. Uh, uh, yeah, June. You only did 192 million rejected it versus 402. Now, what we haven't got yet is a sign of strength, and that's that's after you make a low. That's what you need. You need that wide price spread, accelerated volume, um, in order to basically get to higher price. And the the NQs are doing it right now as I'm speaking. Let's go see if the S and P's just the S and P's are also up. Uh, 87 right now. I think that's also a high for the day. Might as well print 100 if you're going to print 87, right? Yeah, we just took it out. So 47. We're at seven minutes. That high, 42.12, had 61,000 contracts. We came into that with 27,000. Yeah. This is just a test of the high right now. That's what this is. Uh, 4212. That's in the S&P. NQs. This definitely blew away the high. And let's, we'll just see if it can handle it. It can stay there. So the consolidation, the, the prior high there was uh, 10,000 contracts. We're at seven minutes into this bar, and you have 8,000. So that, that's going to do 10,000. You know, I suspect what you're still going to not, you're not going to be able to hold price, though. That's what I suspect is going to happen here. We'll see how this shakes out uh, coming into the close. Let's go into the um, trend for a second, because the amount of buying out here, uh, well, 57. 57 is a low trend. Let me t take a look at the tick for a second. So if we take a look at the tick, oh, look at this. Oh, my God. Look at that. And hey, this is pretty cool, man. So check this out. So right where we are right now, folks, okay, let me show you something. This tick just came in at plus 1866. Now, what happens is that you actually didn't want to see a tick that dramatic. So pitch it. All day, the, the for one tick came in at 1852. That was at, uh, I don't know, this isn't, uh, do I have this in today? No, that's not intraday. Okay, let me get this intraday in one second. The tick number is right. I just wanted to bring it intraday. Let's see what time that came in and make sure it's not the open. Yeah, it's the open. It doesn't matter. Yeah, the open doesn't matter. So what happens, you can't count the open on a tick. That's how it works out, folks. So, so the tick is, uh, yeah, only 1321. 1321 is not a large tick, meaning specifically that when you're going up like this, okay, um, if you get a very large tick. If we let, let's picture we got that eighteen hundred and fifty tick, and that wasn't the opening tick. That would tell you that bottom line it can't cannot sustain itself, and that would be basically pulling back. And it pulls back pretty quick, by the way, uh, when something like that happens. Let's go to uh, DraftKings. D N D K N G D K N G. So we look at. <laughs> Okay, so DraftKings up 136. Lows $9, high 64. Okay. Yeah, this is a big ABC up. Let's see, so approximately 17. Well, you get about four bucks. That gives you 21. Yeah, it almost hit it, but yeah, this looks to me like it wants to go to that the 2126. That's the next step. 
Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. We have the Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up uh, 489. NASDAQ is up uh, 352. S&Ps are up 83. We'll come right back. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials up. There it is, 500. NASDAQ up 359. S&P's up 85. Uh, we take a look. At, let's go uh, into the SPY and see. We're looking for 68 million shares, but I don't think we're going to get that. No, you only have 56. So uh, bottom line is that uh, you're not, you don't have an ABC structure up. So now what you're dealing with, you're dealing with this whole structure here at that 417. You're at 419, but you can see here, let me show you this thing, because the way this is set up here, uh, you got, you're right at, at ice. You're not only, yeah, you're at ice, man, in a big way. So you can make the case, I can make this case here that you really should have come in with volume like about 100, about 100 million. Um, so this is going to get intriguing because if we waffle around this again, um, you know, bottom line is that, you know, you can come back down the other side of that. That's your S&P. NDX 100, we take a look at the NDX. NDX, I, just, I, I believe it hit that uh, number that we were looking for. 326.47. Oh my God. See, it still didn't, man. This is pretty cool. This is sick. So, the NDX, folks, okay? <sighs> Particularly, you know, when you come off a bottom and you're going up and you have a good day 
and you can't take out this swing like we're taking out, this is telling me that we're going to get a slight pullback here, man. Because the, the way that the NDX actually charged higher also, it should have been able to basically take out the 326.47. We got the 326.23. Um, you only did 45 million shares. We did 44 million that day. Bottom line, should have done it. Um, and, you know, hey, we'll see uh, how this is going to shake out. But I suspect that uh, one of the targets that brought up, can you jump the ice? That you can, you can, you know, you were laying right across there for four or five days. Most of the time, um, you have the ice a little bit longer, you know. Always remember, folks, the bank can claw your heart out, the bull can run you over, and thank God there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 o'clock in the morning. Great show. Look at him, folks.